إن هذا القرآن يهدي للتي هي أقوم ويبشر المؤمنين ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا كبيرا بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back to Quran made easy This is your brother Abu Muhammad In the last lesson we learned how to recite Surah Al-Kafirun correctly Today inshallah we're going to learn how to recite Surah Al-Kawthar correctly And remove some of the common mistakes that people make Now let's open our Quran to Surah Al-Kawthar أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم The first word we have is the word inna Noon has a shadd here So we hold the noon Inna Inna Hold and let go If we do not hold it and just say inna a'tinaka Then we haven't given the noon its due right So we have to hold the noon Inna At the same time you'll notice the ghunna coming out Inna Why? Because whenever we pronounce a noon or meme a sound from the nose will always come out automatically. So, inna. Then we have the word, a'tinaka. Now we have two words. We have inna and a'tinaka. The end of the first word, we have an alif, and the beginning of this word starts with the hamza. So, how, what, what is this type of stretching called? Mad ja'iz munfasil. So, in, so hold it. In, then stretch it. Na, inna. Four or five counts. Then we have the word, a'tinaka. Ayn has a sukun. We mentioned the previous ayah. We hold the sound of the ayn. A'tainak. A'tainak. And not A'tainak. A'tainak. Inna A'tainak. Ta here is from the heavy letters. So we pronounce Ta in a heavy manner. Ta. A'ta. A'tainak. Now, after Ta with a fatha, we have a ya sukun. Whenever we have a letter with a fatha, any letter, and after that, follows a ya with a sukun, we have to be very careful and pronounce the letter correctly with its fatha. Make the fatha clear and not in between fatha and kasra, which is very common. It's very common to hear a'tainaka. Tay, tainaka. Tay is in between fatha and kasra. Tay. We don't want it in between. We want a clear fatha. A'ta, a'tainaka. Not a'tainaka. Tay is in between. So in أعطيناك. Then we have the word الكوثر. كاف هي has a فتحة. And then there's a واو سكون. Whenever we have a letter with a فتحة, and after that is واو سكون, we have to be careful in not pronouncing the letter closer to an O, the English O, كوثر, which is common to hear. إن أعطيناك الكوثر. We don't have O in Arabic. We don't say كوثر. But ك كو كوثر أعطيناك الكوثر. Then we have ra at the end with the فتحة because ra is the last letter of the word that we're stopping. This is considered to be a forced sukun. So to know if ra is heavy or light, we look at the letter before it. Now if the letter before is the فتحة أو ضمة, we make the la ra heavy. If it's كسر, we make the la we make the ra light. فهي, which is the letter before it, has a فتحة. So الكوثر ثر and not ثر إن أعطيناك الكوثر را heavy now I'm going to read the whole ayah I want you to listen to me carefully and then you repeat after me إن not إن إن أعط أعطينا أعطيناك الكوثر now you read it good now let's go to the next ayah we have the word فصلي Fahia is a light letter, Sad is a heavy letter, and Lam is a light letter. So you have to be very careful. We don't pronounce all of them lightly, like Fasallili, Fasallili. But we say Fa Sa L. Fasallili, Fasallili. So Sad make it heavier. So Fasallili, Rabbika. Then you have the word Wanhar. Noon has a sukun, a clear original noon having a sukun. So whatever comes after will affect this noon. Now afternoon is a ha. Ha is one of the letters of the throat. 
if you hold your throat and say ah ah you find that ha comes from the throat when any of the six letters of the throat come after a nun sakina which is clear or hidden in a tanween then we have to make that nun sakina clear we, we would we, we want to hear the n sound n sound to get that nun sound to make it clear the tip of the tongue will touch the roof of the mouth n and then let go so tip of the tongue roof of the mouth one har one har do we stay there longer and produce excess one one har no just touch and let go fasalli li rabbika wan har wan har last part here yeah? we have the ra sukun so the previous letter has a fatha so we're going to make the ra heavy wan har har and not wan har light but wan har now i'm going to read the whole ayah i want you to listen to me carefully and then repeat after me fasalli li fasa fasalli li rabbika wan har wan har now you say it Good. Next ayah. Inna. Hold a noon. There's a shadda. Never just go. Whenever you see noon shadda, never just say inna. Inna shani. But hold a noon. Inna. Then we have, we have the word shani aka. We have a hamza here. Now hamza here should be pronounced like a hamza. Like an a sound. Shani aka. Because it's very common to hear inna shani aka. To say inna shani aka, we're swapping the hamza with a ya. Which is a serious mistake. So stick to the Hamza sound. Inna shani aka huwa al-abtar. Ra at the end is heavy because of the previous letter. So now I'm going to recite the whole ayah. I want you to listen to me carefully and then repeat after me. Inna shani aka huwa al-abtar. Now you say it. Good. Now I'm going to recite the whole surah. What I want you to do is to listen to me carefully. Because I'm going to implement all the rules that we learned in this one. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna a'tayna kal kawthar. Fasalli li rabbika wanhar. Inna shani'aka huwa al-abtar. Now this is the end of the lesson. What did we learn in today's lesson? In today's lesson we learned three things. Number one, if we have a letter that has a fatha and next to it is a ya sukun, we have to pronounce that letter with a fatha with a clear fatha and not in between fatha and kasra, as in a sound. There's no a sound but an a sound. This is number one. Number two, if we have a letter with a fatha next to it is a ya sukun, do your best to avoid an o sound because it's very easy to make an o sound. There's no O in the Arabic language, so the Fatha should sound with a clear Fatha. And point number three is that the letter Ra changes. Sometimes it's heavy, sometimes it's light. If the letter Ra is at the end of the word that we're stopping, then this is considered to be a false Sukun, so we look at the letter before it. If the letter before it has a Fatha or Dhamma, then we make the letter Ra heavy. If the letter before the letter Ra, which is at the end of the word, is a Kasra, then we, look, then, then we pronounce the Ra in a light manner. This is what we've learned in today's lesson. If anyone has any questions related to today's lesson, please feel free to ask, inshallah, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Please don't forget to take the short quiz to test yourselves what you've learned in today's lesson. We've also prepared a PDF for all the notes for this lesson. And finally, please do forward and share our videos to all your contacts. Jazakumullah khairan for watching. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.